Text Prison Story Family Salute. Y'all, it's your boy Tim Snow back here with another one. And this one is something that a lot of people talk about, people wonder about, people wonder if it really happens or whatever, but it's real. You know, it's not the glamorous side that a lot of gangsters and convicts like to talk about, but boy, if you ask them, they'll tell you. And that's man on man love in prison. You know what they say, uh, um, for the state, pretty much uh, it happens. Heck no, it's not everybody. It's not even a majority of the men, but they're doing it. We tell you all the time that this is not the life you want. I don't care how good you can fight, what hood you're from, whatever. You're bound to see things that trip you out. And if you're from a nice, comfortable life, this is definitely going to shock you. The first man on man love I seen was at intake holiday unit, probably my second day ever in Texas prisons. Now, mind you, holiday is an open dorm. All it is is a big open area with bunk beds, benches and a bathroom area. You can look over and see everything everybody's doing. They can look over and see everything you're doing. And with that being said. I looked over and seen something I couldn't believe. The technique in prison for open dorm for man on man love is to do it on the bottom bunk. They take sheets and they tie it on all four corners of their bunk and they do what's called tenting up. When you see somebody tented up, you don't come a knocking because that bunk is a rocking and I'm not joking. Of course, I scanned the room when I first got there. I seen there was a big booty dude over there that looked pretty feminine. You know what I mean? Like it was clear as day, right? But excuse me, I it didn't have nothing to do with me. I'm new there. I find the Galveston County guys and we do our thing, right? Hang out and chill. But there was one guy that I seen that was loud. He was obnoxious. He was kind of kind of a distraction disturbance. What do you say? One of the attention seekers. And he made sure he let everybody know that he had a bunch of time. Which now looking back, I'm not even sure though, because people with life sentences usually skipped holiday and they went to bird units. So maybe he was just faking this out, right? Which that happens too, because nobody knows him. This dude was a black guy, light skinned, tall, and he was from West Texas. That's what they called him. He had the most country, hillbilly, twangy, weird sounding accent you've ever heard in your life. I swear I've never really heard nobody from Texas talk like this guy. He sounded like a movie or something, but that was really him. We all kind of noticed him pushing up on the big booty dude. And we're just like, man, what's going on? We're just kind of all tripping. You know what I'm saying? It's a couple of us, our first times in prison. A couple of other guys been down before. But we're knowing it really ain't got nothing to do with us again. So we're just sitting back. When they call lights out that night, I see the big booty dude get up. I see the guy from West Texas get up. They walk back over to the big booty dude's bunk bed. West Texas tells the dude to get out. Him and the guy in the top bunk start arguing a little bit. He say, man, get out. Say, don't worry about what's going on down here. Go to the bathroom or something. So the guy on the top bunk gets up, goes to the bathroom and sits on the toilet because you're not even allowed to be up walking around. And I see West Texas and them tying the sheets around the bunk. And I'm thinking, man, there's no way this can be going on, right? Like, are they really fixing to do this on an open dorm? And I swear the next thing you know, you hear slurping sounds. And now I'm like, oh, man, this is nuts, right? <laughs> I roll over my bunk and I put my, my uh, what I had, my jacket over my head. I'm like, because it was cold. I'm like, oh, no, this is wild. Well, if you've ever watched Pornhub or anything like that, you know, after the slurping sounds, there comes that, uh, you know, what smacking sound. And here goes the big booty dude making all kind of noises. Man, it sounded like a woman over there screaming and hollering. And he's over there going, yeah, how's that feel? Take that. 
You like that? Calling him the B word. You're going to be my little B. And I'm over there like, oh, man. This is unbelievable, right? When they finish, they get up and they both go run to the shower real quick. Take a shower. He tells the dude he can go back to his bunk. And life goes on. Next day, and nobody say nothing to either one of them. Next day after that, they did it again. Nobody said nothing to either one of them. Like, this is the type of stuff that you run across in a prison at an intake. You know what I mean? Like, this is not the life you want. And I ain't got no problem with them doing what they were doing, right? Uh, you do what you do. Like, oh, uh, that's your orientation, your preference, whatever. The crazy part was willing to hurt that man on the top bunk to get what he wanted. And they're willing to do it in front of everybody. But there's exhibitionists. Maybe he's kinky. Maybe he's a true life. Uh, I don't know what you would call it. I don't know. Maybe, like I say, maybe he likes people watching. Maybe he felt like people were going to be scared of him after that. I don't know. Once we seen that, we didn't talk to none of them, neither one of them. Like, man, listen, we ain't participating in that type of stuff. And that's just is what it is. You know, unfortunately, prison is a type of place to where when people are doing that and you associate with them, then guess what? People are going to assume you're doing that. And that might open up some type of door you don't want to go through. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I don't know really how to express how normal that might be on a maximum security unit, too. It's literally a don't ask, don't tell. Everybody says their gang don't do this, their gang don't do that. But there's people in, of all races, all colors, all ages participating in the weirdo stuff. So, yes, indeed, the majority of men aren't doing it. It's a very small minority, but the ones that do, they're not embarrassed about it. They're not shameful about it or nothing. I'll tell you a story. I was actually, so my entire prison bit, I like to play Scrabble. And I would gamble. We would play a penny a point. If I beat you by 150 points, then you owe me a dollar fifty. And we would run that up all week, right? So sometimes we would play partners. Well, there was a cat from Dallas on the other wing that was really, really good. He heard about me down there. So we came, we played a couple times, and he said, Man, we should be partners, man. We could play these old heads over here and tear them up. And I said, Hey, I'm down for it, whatever. You know what I mean? And that's really my extent of ever even talking to this guy, right? Like challenging a word or something or telling him good play. We, we don't talk about nothing like that. We're not even in the same car. One day we're sitting down playing. He fell out of place. He came down there and we're playing. And a guy comes back from medical. And one of the older cats says, yo, man, I don't mess with him. He, he messes with them boys. When he said that, the guy that was my Scrabble partner jumped up. And slapped the hell out that man. I'm talking about his face said, mm, like it was bad. But he didn't get up. My Scrabble partner leaned over the table and said, I mess with them boys too. What you gonna do about it? And when he said that, I was like, What? My Scrabble partner messes with them boys? And he just said it out loud in front of everybody. And I just kind of sat back. I thought they were gonna fight or something. Old school had been down over 20 years already. He just told the dude, hey, man, I didn't realize you did. And I ain't got nothing against it, homie. I apologize. I shouldn't have said that out loud. I know better. So I'm being, I'm stunned here, right, that this man just apologized in a maximum security prison. But nothing, nobody did him any type of harm over that. You know what I'm saying? He had been there so long. He knew, he his pride wasn't in the way, right? So when he apologized, my Scrabble partner sat back down. Everybody started picking up the Scrabble pieces so we could get back to playing like nothing just happened. And he straight up said, yo, man, I got a life sentence. I've been in here since I was a kid and I'm a grown man. He said, nobody's ever sent me a dollar. He said, I ain't got a visit, no letters, nobody to call on the phone. He said, I've been in here starving so bad, doing the games so dirty. He said, it, it was rough, man. He said, I don't even like them punks, but you know what? Ever since I got me one, look, and he showed his stomach, it was big. He said, look at my shoes. 
I dare you to come look at my locker. He said, I'm just doing what I got to do to survive, brother. That's all it is to it. And if you can't understand that, then I don't know what to tell you. And nobody said nothing. I didn't reply. The two guys we were playing didn't reply. And that was it, right? I kind of understood what he was saying. But at the same time, I'm like, man, I can't never put myself in that situation where I get so bad that I want a boyfriend. You know what I mean? I was watching these life for guys go through so many situations from family members dying, kids not want to talk to them anymore. A lot of crazy stuff like that. You know what I mean? So it, it's real. If something like that bothers you, if you think it ain't real and you want to go find out, go do it. But I promise you, this is not the life you want because participating in it not, or not, you will be around it. You know what I'm saying? And y'all have a good day. Appreciate you watching the video. Hit that thumbs up and subscribe for me.